This is a wild, old land. The people who lived here didn't work at changing the land. They were changed by it. So the people only survived by treading softly and learning about limits, their limits, the tribe's limits, and the absolute limits of the land. There are lessons in that that our heavy-footed civilization could well start to learn. G'day, I'm Chris Adnam. I'm going to show you in the next hour how to play the didgeridoo and also how to care for your instrument. Keeping the didgeridoo moist is a very important part of caring for your instrument. I usually pour a glass of water down the throat of my didgeridoo before I play it each session. The reason for this is it keeps the wood moist and it also clarifies the note, gives you a much clearer note. What I'll do is I'll give you two examples, one playing it whilst it's dry, the other whilst I've got water down the throat. First example. Second. I'll place it into the water and you'll notice the difference. Certainly by placing water in it, you'll increase the longevity of the instrument. You'll see it's a lot cleaner. If you're going to buy a didgeridoo, one of the most important decisions to be made in that purchase is the size of the mouthpiece. Now the mouthpiece is very, very important because you must always hold a very strong seal to, be, to enable the drone note to be played clearly. This particular mouthpiece is the size that I choose. I've got a fairly small mouth. Between four to six centimetres I find extremely comfortable. It's no good if you're first starting off to play the didgeridoo with an enormous mouthpiece that you're struggling to hold a decent seal on. So what I would do is I would go through various didgeridoos that are available at that gallery or the place of purchase where you are and I would just try them out gently and find one that actually fits and sits very comfortably on your face. This one here, which I'll show you, upon placing my mouth on it, you'll see it sits very firmly. The importance of a good seal is ultimate in the method of playing the didgeridoo, because unless we get a good seal, we don't hold a clear note. Basically, what I'll do is I'll show you through this that by placing my mouth on the end of this piece of glass, it'll give you some idea of how you perform that perfect seal. 
Once you have attained a good seal, then it's important that we then move into the first part of the technique, which is developing a good, clean note. The way to develop a good, clean note after you've found the mouthpiece that suits your particular style, I suppose, is um, to actually imagine that you're inhaling and exhaling air, but on the exhale, what you're actually doing is vibrating your lips, right, and keeping them vibrating whilst you're exhaling the air. The importance of the seal is because you must build up the muscles around here, around the edge of the mouth, to enable you further down the track to circular breathe. This method is simply started by exhaling air through your lips and holding that vibration. Something like this. What I'm doing in a roundabout sort of a way is almost like I'm squeezing air, if you can imagine, through a, a bagpipe. So what I'm doing is taking in a breath, a small breath through my nose, exhaling the air whilst my lips are vibrating. And eventually you'll keep that going in a circular motion once you develop your cheeks. Now the first, first method for developing those cheeks is a simple exercise which I call a wacka wacka. And the wacka wacka is as it sounds. Place the didgeridoo on the end of your mouth here, maintaining a firm seal. Develop a simple method, which is this one, the wacka wacka. Okay, it's very important to keep the outside skin of the cheeks as tight as a drum. So wh whilst you're doing this whack, whack, whacka, 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 you're actually developing these muscles around here, around the edge of your mouth, and you're developing cheek muscles that you don't normally use. It takes some time, you'll find that you have to do it for half an hour, three quarters every night, it'll ache. It'll, it'll, it'll really, really start to hurt. So when it starts to hurt, you know you're doing something good towards building up those muscles in your cheeks. So what you want to do is get it from a shorter whack, whack, whacker to an extended note. So you're actually lengthening the sound and the resonation that comes from the didgeridoo. So what you're actually doing is, whilst you're holding the note for a longer period of time, you're actually building up the strength very quickly in your cheeks. I'll give you an example of the shorter wacka wacka and the longer wacka wacka. <laughs> that at home. First of all the shorter, wacka, wacka, 
whacker, whacker, then lengthen it, make the note longer. Try once again. Okay, after you've done that for about half an hour, you'll really find it becomes very, very painful, as I said before, around here. This will go eventually because you'll develop the muscles to a degree where they're quite comfortable with the amount of pressure that you're putting on them. And it's when you develop this strength, it will allow you later to snatch a breath, breath through your nose, pass it out through your mouth, expelling the air in one continuous note. But until you have the strength in your cheeks, you will not be able to circular breathe. All right, what I'd like you to do now is play along with me for three minutes with the Wacka Wacka technique. Try and keep up with me. What I'll do is vary the note, length of note, so I'll do short ones, then I'll go to do some longer ones. Back to some shorter ones, back to some longer notes. So just simply play along with me.
The next component after the Wacka Wacka technique to develop it further is the vocal or the larynx. Now by incorporating a sound with the Wacka Wacka technique, what we're actually doing is twofold. In the first instance, we're developing a new sound, which of course is exercising our voice box. The second is we're clarifying the note the note we're actually developing through the Wacka Wacka technique. This sound is actually a little like this. It is performed by actually vibrating your tongue on the roof of your mouth. And it's a bit like grrr. Watch. Grrr. 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 That note, grrr. that sound, is developed by rattling your tongue on the roof of your mouth, just behind your teeth. And by rattling that sound, you're exercising the voice box. So what we're going to do is combine that sound that I've just shown you with the Wacka Wacka technique, which I showed you before. Try that for yourself at home. All right, once again, wacka wacka technique. Squeeze the cheeks, keep them filled with air, expel the air, and at the same time, create the rattle or the growling effect. So it's give you a demonstration that you can follow and develop at the same time those two elements. As you can see from that last method, I've taught you how to develop the vocal as well as developing your cheeks to enable you to pass that air out. What we'd like to do now is accentuate on the tongue. We used a little bit of the tongue in the last method in that because we've got the tongue rattling on the top of the roof of the mouth. What we'll do now is we'll develop what's called a reed note. Now the reed note is very important because it tightens the sound. The reed note is developed from actually placing the tongue just behind the teeth, fairly straight. So there's the front teeth. The tongue comes in just behind the front teeth there and almost blocks off 
the passage of air being expelled in the mouth. So what I'm going to do is give you a demonstration with no tongue and then creating the reed effect by having the tongue just behind the front teeth. Let me give you a demonstration now of creating that reed effect that I've just been talking about. What you'll also notice is that I'm actually pulling these muscles in here as well as to tighten up that note. So what I'm actually doing on top of that as well is pulling in the edges of my mouth whilst I'm squeezing with that wacka wacka technique. Watch again, just simply, full cheeks expulsion of air, then I actually tighten my mouth in here, okay? What I'd like to do now in this next demonstration is incorporate all three of those methods that I've given you. So that's the growling effect with the rattling of the tongue, the cheek exercise, and the reed component, which is towards the front of the teeth, straight and just behind the front teeth. Play along with me at home and We'll develop all these components together. Okay, now we've done the vocal, we've done the reed, 
and we've done the cheek exercise, incorporating also the tongue and the vibration of the tongue. The next very important component is the chest. The chest helps you accentuate the note. All right? The way to develop the chest is simply by a method which I call the coughing method. Now, the coughing method is simply as it sounds. <coughs> <laughs> right? So what we're doing is we're accentuating that cough and in turn lengthening the dynamic of the note. What I'll do is give you a demonstration, but try at home just once again using your chest with the coughing technique. <coughs> <laughs> you can feel your chest expanding. What you do is then transfer that into the didgeridoo whilst you're actually playing the note. Try that again, expanding on the chest in a coughing motion. <laughs> what I'd like to do is incorporate into what I've shown you so far, a piece of music which I've written, which incorporates all of those things that we've talked about, which is the vocal, the reeds, the tongue work, and the cheeks, as well as the chest. So what I'll do is I'll break them up and give you something to practice on at home. What I've actually done as well, that we'll move into now, is combine circular breathing in that. And it's when you have the combination of circular breathing and incorporated those techniques that I've shown you and those methods, that you come up with a piece of music that is appealing not only to yourself, but also to those around you. Circular breathing. 
This on its own is singularly the most important technique that you need in playing the didgeridoo to complete the song. I'll show you a small example of what I mean. Circular breathing is attained by combining the inhaled breath and the exhaled breath and the combination between both of those the muscles in your cheeks must coincide with the breath coming in through your nose. By building your cheeks up, what you actually do is develop the strength to be able to squeeze that air through at a rate which enables the note to continue once you've taken a breath through your nose. So it completes this cycle of drone note. What I'll do is I'll give you an example of the method which I found is the easiest to attain circular breathing. This method is to quickly snatch a breath through the nostrils whilst your cheeks are expelled, so they're at their full width. Try and snatch a breath through there and then pass that through. I'll show you an example. You see what's happening there? I'm snatching a breath in through my nose, bringing it round into my mouth, and then with my cheeks controlling that so that that pocket of air that has been brought into the roof of my mouth, I'm then squeezing out and expelling that air whilst I'm keeping my lips vibrating. Unless you keep the lips vibrating, as well as inhaling the air, then obviously you don't have the sound. So we'll try that again for you at home. Snatch your breath whilst the cheeks are at their full width. One of the uh, other methods that I'd like to teach you too, which is very important in the overall playing of the didgeridoo, is the overtone. Now the overtone is actually a half note. So what you're actually going to do is send the note halfway down the instrument and actually make it reverb against itself. This particular didgeridoo I've chosen to do the overtone because of its shape and size it produces a very good overtone note. Now the, the technique for actually producing the overtone comes from almost creating a trumpet-like effect with your mouth. So just as a trumpeter would play a very tight note here, 
what you're actually doing is creating as small a hole as possible and forcing the air down the tube but actually directed towards the roof of the didgeridoo. So instead of playing that note directly down the middle, what you're going to do is tighten it up by pulling your chin in here and actually bringing your top lip forward and your bottom lip under a little bit, sort of like and spit the note out through a very, very, very small hole. So you make that hole, that passage or the place where the air exits as small as possible and actually spit that note out. So what you're doing is going. At the same time as forcing that air out, you're bringing your tongue up and directing your tongue towards the opening of your mouth, all right? So where the air is coming out, your tongue is actually forcing that air into the roof of the didgeridoo. I'll give you a demonstration, and I'll do that into the didgeridoo. Normal drone note, the Titan drone note. Notice how I'm actually pulling in my cheeks here and tightening my mouth surround. So by tightening my mouth surround and directing that expelled air towards the roof of the didgeridoo. So by tightening that to a degree that you're actually continuing the note through circular breathing is a very, very difficult thing to do. But with practice, that overtone, you should be able to hold that for about half a minute. And this is a very good way to do it, is to go from your drone note up to your overtone and then whilst you're getting your overtone, then try and hold it. Back to the drone note again. Try again. finished. What you do over a period of time is you keep at that, keep tightening that particular technique until you can hold it for at least half a minute. If you can hold it for about half a minute, then you're doing extremely well, number one. Number two, that can dramatically affect the tune that you produce from here. I'll give you a tune which incorporates the overtone note into the drone.
see how I've extended that note by bringing in the half note or the overtone and giving that a dynamic. So I've actually increased the dynamic of the note by cutting it in half or producing an overtone. And as you get faster and faster and faster, what ends up happening is you lose, you lose your cheeks and then you return to your stomach. Moving from circular breathing, once we attain circular breathing, what we then can do is bring some animation into the tune that you've developed. Animation is and should correspond with your particular place. No matter where you are in the world, listen for what's around you. Listen to the birds, listen to the animals, that is your animation and that is the strength and certainly the individuality with the didgeridoo. Because once you develop your own animation by listening, then you develop your own sound. My animation comes from the birds in particular in my particular area in this magnificent country here. What I'm going to do is give you an example of some of the birds that are in my particular area. The first one is a crow, and the second one I will do is a kookaburra. Those two examples are simply defined by me sitting and listening. You may have others where you come from. It's a case of sitting down, listening to how that bird makes its song and then incorporating it, if you can, into the didgeridoo. Other animals that we have in Australia are the dingo. The dingo sounds a little bit like this. It's a very much a long drawn out note, which is a case of using the vocal and then incorporating a short bark at the end of it. often hear at night around here is a very unusual sound. It's sort of like a <coughs> and you can actually incorporate that by using the vocal as well as keeping the vibrating note moving.
The next sound I'll do for you is a favourite, particularly to people living in Australia because it's our national symbol, it's the kangaroo. And the kangaroo hops along like this, up and down and up and down. And the way you can actually make that sound is by flicking your tongue on the roof of your mouth whilst you're playing the note. So you're actually going ding, 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 all right, by flicking that da, da on the top. Da, da, up there, you actually make this repercussive bouncing sound, and I'll give you a demonstration. The last animation that I will do is a, um, a bird that's probably one of my favourites called the brolga. And the brolga is a very colourful bird with long stick-like legs that lives in the swamps and around the wetlands areas, uh, particularly in the north of Australia. It, uh, it makes a very unusual sound. It's almost like a like this. So to do that, you're incorporating that sound that I gave you before, which is the grrr, you know, at the top, with a slight tightening of the cheeks in here whilst you're passing that air through. So you're running your tongue along the top, making that grrr sound, but you're tightening it by bringing your cheeks in here. So once you play that, it gives quite a nice effect. For this particular demonstration, what I'd like to do is incorporate all of those techniques and methods that I've shown you earlier in the program into one particular tune. With this incorporation, what I would like to bring in is the chest, the vocal, the reed, the bark, the kookaburra, the boomerang, the crow, the kangaroo, and some of my own derivations um, which I've put in. This will give you something to practice on at home. I'll separate them all so they're quite clear and concise. And although at first you may not be able to keep up with what I'm actually playing, in time you will, because as you develop each one of these methods, you'll grow stronger towards completing your own song. I'll give you a demonstration. <laughs>
The stomach. The stomach is equally as hard to master as the chest or the vocal exercises. The stomach is a very important component in the overall playing of the didgeridoo. Eventually what happens in time after an immense period of uh, experimentation and certainly um, good tutorial you will then start to lose your cheeks. So they don't play such an important role in the development of that note. They're still there to back you up, but what actually happens is your stomach control or your stomach muscles aid you in actually bringing that note forward. The value of playing with the stomach is it then permits us to produce a strong beat. The tongue stays very flat. In fact, it's parallel with the roof of the mouth. The tip of the tongue is firmly centered in the exit point of the mouth's tightened outlet, sort of like a pinhead hole. As your cheeks are not being used, they are flat, and the energy is concentrated on the stomach muscles and the throat to squeeze a very thin passage of air upwards whilst inhaling through the nostrils very short intervals.
advanced player should have very little cheek movement and there should be a minimal snorting of air sound to be heard from the nostrils. This land is our time, it's our past and our future. We run and jangle over it in a dream of immortality, but in the longer view, we don't have the substance of a grain of sand. Mm -hmm.